Hey everyone, uh, Tony Winston here, Jazz Piano College, working out of this book today. It's uh, Herbie Hancock, Classic Jazz Compositions and Piano Solos Transcribed by Bill Dobbins. And uh, we'll take a look at Autumn Leaves. And uh, there's another fellow who's got a video up with almost an identical transcription. It is a different one, but it's, it's very, very close. And... Uh, I'm going to use a little bit of his video, and so I'm also going to link to his video because maybe you want to go over there and, and support his channel. A bunch of nice transcriptions up there. The title of this video is How to Sound Like a Herbie Hancock, but uh, I don't want to be a smart ass or anything, but you can't. <laughs> I mean, Herbie was an explorer. He still is. I mean, uh, Let me go over a few things in this transcription, and I'm only going to use a few pages. A couple of things I noticed right away. He starts with a great minor 13 chord. And so he knows a little something about reharmonization. So instead of just C minor seventh, like we would expect, it's a C minor 13. And then, you know, he's using rootless voicings here. So he knows about that. A characteristic thing that he does is go one and two and put that bass note in. It kind of grounds him. He, he, you know, he knows where he's at. So. I cannot play this transcription, so don't expect anything here. But uh, then, you know, he says, there's a nice F altered into a B flat major. And, you know, again, using rootless chordal voicings. So, and I think this is like back in the 60s. So he's already really studied this stuff and he knows what he's doing here. There again, he hits that little bass note on the and of one. I don't understand this chord for A minor. I guess I could. I think it's just something to move to this one, which is a D altered. But you know, you can just think like a, an A flat seventh chord like this with a 13, come up with that voicing. Now, that's a great voicing. I didn't really know that voicing. <laughs> but then, you know, he plays typical stuff. I mean, you know, not typical, but I mean, you know, standard kind of two, five, one lines that you learn in college. Let's see what else I can touch on real quick because it's going to be a short video. Just a great line there. All right. So knowing the basic stuff, how to play through two five ones and use altered chords and rootless voicings, you know, you got to have that before you could even start thinking about like where Herbie was going with this stuff. Uh, so uh, another thing is 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 reharmonization. Now he's got an A half diminished here. So I'm going to put the bass note in. And then now we're on that D altered. And you know, all you have to do is think about the, the tritone away and play unaltered shit. And then you get the altered shit when the bass is down there, you know. So if the chord had said A flat, you know, it's, it's very typical, but you know, using it as a D altered. All right, and then, look. <laughs> I mean, that's just right out of the textbook, you know? <laughs> An enclosure. Now, I think right here, actually, yeah, it's C7 sharp 11. Now, this is a 2-5-1, and, you know, when we learn this song, we play C minor there, you know, so we can go, and, all right, C minor, right? But Herbie makes it C dominant, and then not just C dominant, but you know, C dominant with some fancy stuff. And it goes right into, you know, I mean, I could have played this one, believe it or not. 
I do stuff like that all the time. That's the altered scale, and I, I love that chord symbol up there, F7 altered. That, that's what you need. It means every frickin' tension is altered. Some guy just complained about my swearing, so I'm going to try not to do it anymore. A little Lydian or a mistake or something. That's another thing about transcriptions is sometimes there's just mistakes in there, you know. I mean, when you're in the heat of the moment, you don't play perfectly. Very few of us do anyway. And then the other thing, all right, you know, know your two five ones and how to reharm and that kind of thing. But then you gotta know the blues. Check out, it's the second course here. <laughs> He's just having fun there with the blues, basically. Here comes a classic line. Oh, no, sorry. Uh. No, no, I'm putting in altered scale before it gets there, sorry. Uh. All right, right into a G minor, except he's reharmonized it to B G altered. Always uses that. What is it? That is it. That. Where does he do that? Third chorus. I mean. <laughs> it's not difficult stuff. It's just basic stuff. But then he explores. And then he comes back and gives you some basic stuff that, you know, lets you know where the starting point is. And then he goes off and explores some more. And it's those explorations. You're, he's always exploring, so you can't copy him. You just have to explore on your own. I love how he went. Anticipates that next chord like Bill Evans does all the time. Back to this thing. That, that's the reharm. It's a, it's a very common, well-known reharm to go B minor. B flat minor, you know, it's two fives, two, five, two, five. Another thing to notice how sparse his left hand is a lot of the time, you know, it's something Keith Jarrett did a lot of too. But that's just basic stuff, you know, be sparse with your left hand and play a great line with your right hand. I said this would be short. I will follow up on it. Thank you all very much.